Good afternoon. This is a video talking about the new edition of Bloody Barons. It won't be published to the end of 2019, but this gives you an idea of how it works. The game is rules basically designed by the 15mm figures or 25mm figures. I'm going to show you the 15mm version. The 15mm version is on a 3 foot by 4 foot cloth. That gives some spare space around the edge for all the wargamer junk. I don't want to see rules on the table and other bits and pieces, cups and the like. The 25mm version will need a 6 foot by 4 foot, which will give less room around the edge unless you've got a very large table. Now let's go with the 15mm version. Now, in these battles, and in this game, Bloody Barons, there's going to be some terrain or scenery. Now, first of all, the game dictates you have to have one building template of scenery, one marsh template of scenery, and one gentle hill. You must have those. Each player then contributes two of their own. Now, I'm going to make this up. One player is going to contribute a wood, and the second piece the player contributes might be a, a rough hill. The other player is going to contribute, hmm, I think, a gentle hill as well. And also a wood. There we go. Those are the seven pieces. Now, Bloody Barons is always an attack defender game. Each of these pieces uses one sixteenth of the table area. The table area is four grids along and four up. Sixteen is a four by four. You don't have to mark the cloth because the terrain pieces delineate what's going on. The initial deployment works like this. The defender places any piece he likes in one of the corners of the table. I'll pretend to be the defender, picks up a wood and puts it in that corner. That's the attacker's edge. Now the attacker deploys a piece. Well, he's chosen this hill. He's going to put it in this corner. The first four pieces must be in the corners. The defender deploys the next piece. He's putting a wood in the far corner. The attacker deploys a fourth piece. He's going to put a rough hill on defender's base edge. That's four pieces so far. After the four corners, go anywhere you like. So, defender's going to put a gentle hill in that. The attacker puts the marsh there. You can see it's four zones deep and four zones in width. And last of all, village gets placed there. Now, although there's no grid marked on the table, it still is a gridded game. You move from zone to zone. In the Wars of Roses, men don't wander off all over the place on their own. Instead, they operate as a ward or a whole battle or a group of units. So in this game, a group of units will move from zone to zone to zone. They won't decide to go off in different directions. They follow their baron, their lord, king, whatever, and they go with him from zone to zone to zone. Going sideways needs a successful dice roll, because that's not normal. Coming out of terrain needs a successful dice roll. Now, these particular templates made by SNA Scenix, you can use any you like, but these are very nice. Now, I put some trees on, just for decoration. This isn't a skirmish game. There's lots of skirmish games around these days. This isn't. This is a proper battle game with hundreds of figures. So the trees aren't literal. They just show a wooded area. You don't have to say who's behind the tree and who's looking out and odd stuff like that. Now the buildings, once again, I put the buildings on the template, but they're not literal. We don't do things like saying who's at what window, what are they doing, what type of window is it, all that odd stuff. It's just an area. Now to give an idea how this works, we'll put some soldiers. Remember, the rules aren't out yet. These are just some early ideas to show you how things work. Every unit of Bloody Barons is made of four bases. We first of all used four bases back in 1997 with one of our first gridded games. Now, the four 
must be in a distinct zone. There they are in that zone. We don't care where in the zone they are. They're just in that zone. That's all that matters. Because you're an army commander, you're not messing about down at the scale of an individual unit. There's the four bases. The capacity of each zone or each terrain piece is three units. That is the maximum capacity, three units. A complete army might have about 17 units. So it's not a skirmish game, it's a proper battle game. A proper battle game. There they go. Now, the individual figures don't matter. They, they matter as units. It's assumed that the units have a proportion of bowmen in them. That's not a problem. Once the scenery is set up, it is possible to move things around. Here's the initial deployment of the seven pieces. The attacker first, I'm standing at the attacker's edge. He has one dice and he plays on any piece he likes. I'll choose this marsh. He can roll it again and again and again, and every three, four, five or six allows the piece to move. The attacker goes first with his single dice. I'll roll the dice, a four. I'm going to move it one place there. I'll roll again. Six, I'll move it again. Um... Hmm. I'll bring it to this base edge. I don't want to move it again, that's the attacker finished. The defender then gets three dice. I'll put one on the hill, I'll also put one on the marsh, try and get the back again, and uh, maybe the wood in the far corner. I'll do the hill first. Roll a dice, a one. It cannot move, there's no movement allowed on that piece. Second dice on the marsh, a three. Yeah, I want to bring it back in the middle a bit more. So I bring it up once, I roll again, a two, that's the end of that one. Third piece is a wood, a two, it doesn't move. That's the end of all the scenery movement, it's done. Now scenery affects the whole zone. So if there's some hedges, you put the hedges in this zone here. And it doesn't matter how they're laid out, that's a hedged zone. It's not a skirmish game, you don't have to line up behind the hedge, there are hedges in that zone. Don't forget there are 16 zones here. Also, if you wanted to, and the zones aren't clear to players, I've made up some little templated bits of scrub that I could use here and there to show the corners of a zone, if it wasn't very clear. But most players don't find it difficult at all. Corners. They don't do anything, just show where the zone is. I could move them to here and say, look, there's a zone. If it helps people work out where a zone is, they're just little decorations. Because troops move from zone to zone. Now in this, there are three main types of units. Now three types, because all units have four bases. There we are. One, two, three, four. They'll go down as the game progresses. Now on a command base, there's a command base. Pop one in there. If the command base has two figures it's a levy unit the worst type of troops they're still capable but they're the worst type if the command base has three figures like this one does it's a retinue unit the main units are retinue most units are retinue if it had four figures on it it's a household unit don't forget you don't have units of foot knights that's just impossible but household be the very best troops there is and household be in full plate or full harness, as they call it. So three types of units. A typical army might have about two household units, about nine retinue units, and about four or five levy. This can, of course, change, and there is a point system. And the rules will also include all the major battles of the period. Remembering, the Wars of Roses are a series of very small wars, each war only lasting a few weeks, a couple of months, that sort of thing. It's basically a race to London, so you can get there and be king. Thank you.